Back in its day, before the advent of adapters and converters, the Commodore 128 required a special monitor for its new 80 column mode, right? Actually, perhaps not. New to the Commodore 128 was the 8563 VDC, or Video Display Controller. This chip is what allows the machine to output 80 column text mode with 16 colors. It also enables graphics modes with resolutions up to 700 by 700 pixels when equipped with 64K of video RAM. The VDC requires the use of a special monitor connected via digital RGB with intensity, along with horizontal and vertical sync signals. In this regard, the VDC output is more or less compatible with IBM's CGA standard. So, it saddens me slightly to see these systems starting in this suboptimal screen mode. Seriously, I suspect that a statistically significant subset of screenshots I've seen showcase this sad situation specifically. It is understandable, because RGB monitors were costly, and people who are upgrading from their C64s may have opted to keep their old displays back in the day. But it's now the 21st century, and I say it's high time we let the VDC shine. In its heyday, the 128's VDC output would be connected to an RGB monitor with a cable such as this 8-pin DIN example, used by the 1084 and similar displays. Another option would be this more common straight-through DE9 cable, used by the 1902 and other CGA-type monitors. Here in the present, there are a number of ways to convert the 128's digital signal to a more readily usable format including the GG Labs CGA to RGB shown here, which provides the most faithful color reproduction possible, but sacrifices cost and convenience. A more recent alternative is this adapter made by Sven Pook, which is both inexpensive and convenient, as it combines the 40 and 80 column signals into a single SCART output. Its drawback is that it cannot reproduce the 128's brown color accurately, a minor but hotly debated issue. If you recall in the Toronto auction lot video, I found this interesting cable in one of the bins. At the time, I wasn't sure what its purpose was, or even what system it was for. However, several viewers noted in the comments that it was a special cable for the Commodore 128, one whose existence I never even knew about back in the day. Ah yes, how could I have missed this before? It's clear as day in the VDC pinout diagram sitting right there on pin 7. And now, dear viewers, I'm afraid I must admit that the jig is up. This is literally what the episode is about. A cable I found in a box. But hey, it's an actual retro bit. A short video. Something I've tried to make 49 times unsuccessfully now. I hope you'll indulge me just this once. Since you're still here, let's see what all the fuss is about then, shall we? So now, the 128's 80 column VDC output is connected to the display's composite input. Only the luminance signal is present, so it doesn't matter whether the monitor is set to composite or split YC, the results are the same. But look how sharp that is! 100% legible 80 columns on any composite capable display. One drawback is that you still need the composite input for 64 mode. No problem though, any old inexpensive AV switch box will do the job here if your display only has a single input. You can use one of the audio ports with your split Luma Chroma cable for 64 mode if, for example, you want to use an old 1702 or the like. So far so good. Let's talk about 80 column text mode, since it's most likely why you'll be using a 128 over a 64 in the first place. Even though this is only composite, the text is crisp and legible. 
Of course, this is a high quality computer monitor, not an old living room television. So we'll address that concern in a moment. Word processing is another reason you might have used a 128 in this capacity back in the day. Having color isn't important here, but 80 columns makes for a huge quality of life improvement. Fontmaster 128 isn't what you see is what you get, but it does show a preview of the currently selected font, size, and style in a graphic window at the top of the screen, which is a very useful feature not seen in other text-only packages. When using a digital RGBi display, there is a separate wire for each of red, green, and blue. As it's a digital signal, each color can only be on or off, yielding a total of 8 possible combinations. An intensity bit doubles that to 16, allowing for both dark and bright versions of each color. One exception is that most CGA and Commodore RGBi monitors have circuitry to display brown instead of dark yellow. When outputting monochrome, the VDC doesn't appear to be able to distinguish between each color. It converts everything to one of white, black, or a single shade of gray. This could potentially have adverse effects on software that relies on color, so let's take a look at a few use cases now. Let's start with my favorite killer app, DesTerm128. One defining feature is the ability to display full 16 color IBM ANSI graphics on the 128. Will ANSI art and BBS menus still be usable in black and white? There's only one way to find out. As it turns out, Lack of color isn't a huge detriment when using a terminal emulator. The 80 column ANSI is crisp and clear, and even without color, you can generally make out what's going on in the menus and images just fine. While it's not fondly remembered as a graphical powerhouse, the VDC can be wrangled into producing some impressive images all the same. I do think it's fair to say that things take a turn for the worse when viewing certain images in monochrome due to the lack of grayscale shades. As we've come to expect from the scene, demo coders eventually found ways to make the VDC do things it wasn't designed for, including displaying more than 16 colors, as well as operating at higher resolutions and refresh rates, including a VGA-like 31 kHz horizontal with 60 Hz vertical. Not so fast there, Amiga. The Commodore 128 still has a few surprises left in it, if you squint your eyes just so. Okay, so using monochrome in this capacity isn't really ideal, but you can still generally tell what's going on. Viewing high-res graphics on the 128 is a pretty specific corner case to begin with, so let's take a look at another more common use case. Here's GEOS128 looking absolutely fantastic on a CRT using the digital RGB cable. It's worth noting that color was never supported in this mode, and it was necessary to switch to the 40 column VIC to use color in applications such as GeoPaint. And here's the same desktop now using the composite input. Now be honest, if I showed you this first and said it was digital RGB, would you have believed me? Well, either way, I'm impressed how sharp it looks in this mode of operation. Now, as I mentioned before, using a high-end monitor, even with the composite input, might not be the most fair way to perform the comparison. 
While I don't have a run-of-the-mill consumer CRT television to test with, I do have this very old 24-inch Dell LCD with a super crispy composite upscaler. Just to make the point, here's what I mean. Any shortcomings in the video quality should be revealed by this thing. So what do you think? Certainly not as clear as it was on the CRT, but I think it's still quite good all things considered. Now here's a part of the studio you don't usually see. The area I film in doubles as my home gym during the week, and I have this sub $300 55-inch 4K TCL panel stationed in front of the rowing machine. So let's see what the VDC output looks like when blown up to ridiculous proportions. I honestly don't think you can ask for much better than that. So here's my message to everyone out there. No more making excuses. Boot your Commodore 128 in 80 column mode and enjoy the heck out of your VDC. Get a color adapter if you want. They start around $40 US. Alternatively, you can buy one of these monochrome cables for just 15. So there you have it. An entire episode on a cable I found in a bin. Not exactly a 1581 build, am I right? Well, if you like this short format and want to see more actual retro bits, consider leaving a thumbs up or drop a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this bit. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.